In life, things don't always go as planned. We may think that we know what lies ahead, but due to circumstances that are sometimes greatly outside of our control, we end up going in a different direction. Things get out of step. Things get uncomfortable. Things get messy sometimes. And we don't know exactly what to do or where to go. Well, the Lord knows when you're in this circumstance. He knows how you're feeling about it. And he knows how to help you with it. He understands how you feel at these times. And he wants you and I to go in a good direction that's going to bless us. And so this morning, here are three ways to deal with life's messes. Three ways to deal with the messes in our lives from the books of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians and Galatians. And through this, the Lord is going to use it to bring direction at those times when we suffer from that confusion and to bring blessing into our lives. So three ways to deal with life's messes. The first thing is to follow God's ways. Follow the Lord's ways in your life. The Corinthian church had some pretty big problems. And Paul wanted to address some of their concerns and problems and misunderstandings in a way that would bring help and guidance to them. So Paul, he was a blessing to them. And so he encouraged them to take a humble attitude. He wanted them to boast in the Lord instead of in themselves because a lot of their problems stemmed from pride that they had in their hearts and it wasn't good for them. And so in our passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 31, Paul reminded them that when God called you, he called you not because you were great in the eyes of the world. He called you because he loved you. And so boast in him, he was saying. He said, God didn't call you. He said, not many of you were wise according to the flesh. Not many of you were considered to be pillars of wisdom according to the world. Not many of you were mighty. You didn't have a lot of power. You didn't have a lot of influence. Not many of you were mighty, Paul said. Not many of you were noble. You weren't in a class of nobility and greatness in this world. But Paul said that it was by God's doing, it was by his doing, that you're in Christ Jesus. It's by God's doing. The Lord loved you. The Lord was merciful to you. The Lord did these wonderful things to you, and he's became for you righteousness, because the Lord has accounted you to be righteous and good through Christ. The Lord has become to you your sanctification, because he took you out of this world, and he set you apart for his good and holy purposes. You weren't in God's sanctified purposes before, but now you are. The Lord has justified you, he says. The Lord has blessed you. He's redeemed you. And it's by his doing, by the Lord's kindness toward you and mercy, that you are in this place now. And so follow God's ways in your life. Like the Corinthians, sometimes we think that we know best. We think that if we just say all the right things at all the right times, that suddenly things are going to be great. God wants people to trust in him. It's different from just doing something that might seem like the most pragmatic thing to do at the time. And the Lord loved you and the Lord loved me when we were even going the wrong way in our lives. And so Paul said to let him who boasts Boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord. We need to take this humble attitude. The Lord loved you just where you were, and he loves you just where you are in your life. He didn't call you and I because we were great or wise or clever. He called you because he knew that you needed him. And he delighted in showing his love and devotion to you in your life. He embraced you with nail-pierced hands of forgiveness. He put you upon his shoulders and he rejoices over you. And so let's follow the Lord's ways. Let's follow his ways. Let's not have a worldly attitude and think that just by worldly wisdom, we're going to be able to manage our lives. No, we need the Lord in our lives. And so we say, Lord, thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me. We lift our eyes to God and we see the Lord as our Savior. So three ways to deal with life's messes. The first is to follow God's ways. Follow God's ways. When there's hardship, we have to trust the Lord with it. The second thing is to work through things in your life. Work through things with the people that God has put in your life. There was great unrest in the Corinthian church. And in the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul wanted to show them that he cared about them and that he was willing to work through things with them in their lives and in their church. So Paul wanted them to see this. And so he said some things that were uncharacteristic of things he would say because he was boasting about all that he went through because he cared about the churches and cared about them. So he was boasting and comparing himself to others just to show that he cared for them. They happened to be following some people who weren't leading them in the right way. And Paul was trying to show them that he was willing to go through a lot for their well-being in their lives. And so he said that compared to these other people who didn't really have the type of care and concern for them that Paul had, he said that he was in far more labors than they were. He was in far more labors. He was saying, I worked harder for you. I really cared about you. I really went through a lot of struggle for you. And he said he went through imprisonments for them because he was put into prison for preaching the gospel and for tending to the needs of the churches. Far more imprisonments. He said that he was beaten times without number, being beaten times without number. He was pummeled with stones for them. He was pummeled with stones. He was shipwrecked on three occasions. If you think about that, being in one shipwreck would be a pretty bad thing. Shipwrecked on three occasions. He said he was often hungry and he was often sleepless for them. He said that he was subjected to cold and exposure. But the thing is, is that Paul cared for these people, even though he could have been tempted to write them off, he cared for them, and he was willing to work through the thorns in his relationship with them. He cared for them. He loved them. And so work through things with people in your life. Work through things. Take the extra step. Don't be too quick to write people off. Conflict is hard, I know, it's tough. Set boundaries with people. Don't let them take you to places you don't want to go. Set boundaries with them in your life. But don't be too quick to cut them off. Don't be too quick to get them out of your life. When someone does something against us, we need to tell that person that we were hurt. And like Paul, we have to be willing to go the extra, extra mile. Reaffirm your love for those people in your life as you're able to. We shouldn't always respect, uh, expect rather a response right away, but let's give it some time with people. Let's pray that God would bless people in our lives. Let's try to work through things in talking to them and in praying with them to go in the right way for ourselves and pray the Lord would bless, help, and restore them too. The Lord understands how you feel in relationships when things are really hard, when you've been struggling a lot. He knows how you feel about it. And I'm convinced that as we try to work through things with people in a way that honors the Lord, that God will bless you and he'll bless me in the process too. Work through things with people in your life. And as we do that, we're being like the Lord himself. Because in our relationship with God, God is never the party who's done something wrong. It's always us. And yet he preserves us and keeps us and he's patient with us. And the Lord may work in that person's life in ways that you just don't expect. So three ways to deal with messes in your life. Uh, follow the Lord, follow God, work through things with the people God has brought into your life. And the third thing is to stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus in your life. In the book of Galatians, Paul taught that we're not bound by some of these uh, laws in the Old Testament that were passed away. There's the moral law that we still have an obligation to, 
uh, in one respect in our lives. Not that we're going to be condemned for our lack of obedience because Jesus made up for that. But there were some ceremonial laws that passed away. They're no longer for us. And Paul wanted the Galatians to see that they had fulfillment in Jesus, that they were complete in Jesus, and that Christ was their Savior. Stay with Jesus in your life. We're sometimes tempted to think, even as Christians, that our basis for having eternal life is trying to be a good person or by obeying God's law. The Galatians were tempted to think that too, and Paul reminded them that Jesus is their Savior, and he reminds us that Jesus is our Savior. Paul said in chapter 2, verses 17 to 19, he said, If, while seeking to be justified in Christ, he basically said, if we see that we're sinful, it's because God's law brought us to see this about ourselves. So it's a very interesting thing he's saying. It's because of our sinfulness. We think that we can be good enough to earn God's favor. And yet that very thing, the law, that we try to use to earn God's favor ends up showing us that we sin. And so in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, Paul talks about the law being a tutor to us, a tutor to lead us to Christ, that we may be justified by faith. And in that day and age, a wealthy family would hire someone who would be a tutor. And I know that we think of a tutor today as someone who just teaches children intellectually. But back then, it was a little bit different. The tutor would be almost like a guardian for the children and would follow the children around and make sure they didn't get into trouble. Well, what Paul is saying is that the law, it upholds this standard. It's a tutor to us in that way. And it shows us that we haven't met that standard. And so it leads us to Jesus in that way by the work of the Holy Spirit as God works on our hearts and reveals to us the gospel. We're led to Jesus. We're justified by faith. It's not by our good works or even our good intentions, but it's by what the Lord has done for us. So we need to stay with Jesus in our lives because we continue to have that temptation to try to merit before God. And we need to make sure that we always see Jesus as our Savior and rest in Him. So stay with Jesus in your life. So many people today see their lives apart from Jesus. They think that if they just follow the right teacher or TV talk show host, if they do whatever that person tells them to do, they'll be okay. Or maybe they follow some psychic or some supposed spiritual person with some type of title that can somehow unlock the key for their lives. Or some people say, just follow your heart. Find your authentic self. Very similar to some of the things people experienced in the first century with Gnosticism. They say that if you're just true to yourself, that's all that matters. Well, I know we hear these messages but let's stay with Jesus in our lives. Stay with Him. Stay with the Lord. It's the Lord who loved you so much that He provided for your greatest need of forgiveness and eternal life. It's the Lord who's a living Savior because He died and He rose again and He's living for you. He's living. He's with you in your life. He, he helps you. He guides you. Stick with Jesus. There is no one, there is no one who can compare in any respect to him. Stick with him. You'll be in a better place in your life to understand the world and your place in it. And you can look forward to eternity with him. So three ways to deal with life's messes. The Lord helps us with our messes in life. Follow God's ways. Look to Him with humility. Know that the Lord called you and saved you. Follow His ways in your life. Look to Him with joy for His salvation He's given you. Work through things with the people in your life. Don't write people off because God didn't write you off. Pray for them. Say a good word to them in Christ. And then the third thing is stay with Jesus in your life because He's your Savior. He's unique. He's different from every other person in this world, every other supposed authority. He is your Savior. He's your Lord. And as you and I do these things, 
we're going to find that we're going to have direction from the Lord even in the middle of the greatest messes in our lives. I know that 2020 and 2021 could be seen as a big mess. But the Lord has helped us and he'll continue to help us. And as we do these things, he's going to direct us and he promises to work out things for good for us in our sanctification and in bringing us his blessing in our lives. So the Lord is going to bless you and help you. Let's work through our, uh, these, this, find these three ways to deal with our messes. And I know the Lord is going to bless you. I know that he cares about you. And this week and this year, I expect great things for all of us in our lives. So let's pray to the Lord together. God, we thank you that you care about us in the middle of our mess, God, and that you're with us. And Father, for myself and our church family, Lord, I pray that you'd be with them this week to encourage, to exhort, to bless. God, the things that weigh heavy upon our hearts and our minds, God, that we haven't quite got a handle on yet. Father, I ask that you would undertake for us in mighty, mighty ways, God. Father, we think of our family members, too, who've been struggling, God. We think of friends. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them and help them with their struggles, too. That all of us together, Lord, as one new man in Christ, could glorify you and look back and say, God, thank you so much for blessing me during this time and blessing my family members. For, Lord, we lift these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.